Hello and welcome. This time on Out Motorsports, we're talking about van life and not van life with government cheese down by the river, but van life for the sake of motorsport. Mercedes-Benz sent us this 2020 Sprinter 2500 Crew, which as you can see has seating for five and a large cargo area behind it, as well as a towing capacity of 5,000 pounds. The idea here is to see if a van equipped like this or similar could be useful for motorsports both at the racetrack and support otherwise. So with that, let's take a quick tour of the Sprinter 2500, talk about how well it is set up to support a motorsport type of enthusiast, and go for a quick drive to see how it is on the road. And of course, if you like this video, please do take a second and subscribe to our channel right here on YouTube. We are very excited to keep producing more and more videos, and the more support we have, the easier that is to follow through on. Now, like I said, this Sprinter is a crew model, which has seating for five and then a giant cargo space here at the back. This Sprinter in particular has the optional wooden floor with D-rings and hooks everywhere, and then the optional side panels. It also has a full headliner that runs all the way to the rear with some lighting down the center of the roof. Now, the rear of this van is pretty simple other than these D-rings. The D-rings are placed throughout the floor, so you can strap down more or less anything you would need to. I did have a couple people ask about getting a motorcycle in the back of this van, which I think would be very easy to do. And you could certainly add in some sort of wheel holder to properly secure your motorcycle in the back of the van so it doesn't move around while you're on the road. It's important to note that with a van equipped like this, rather than one set up for a full load of passengers, you don't really get any sort of amenities back here. You've got the van with the D-hooks and the floor, so you can set it up however you want. The challenge with that is that you don't really have any sort of insulation or creature comfort that can block a lot of noise. We'll come back to that when we talk about towing with this van. But regardless, other than this headliner at the back of the van, you've got nothing that's going to mask sound. So it's worth considering if you're gonna build a van out like this, really think about what you're gonna do with these side panels, because these are truly just big expanses of sheet metal and it can get a little noisy on the road. And moving on to the very, very back of the van and what counts for a lot of us, the tow hitch. Let's talk about towing for a minute. This Sprinter is a 2500 equipped with the new Four 2020 turbocharged four-cylinder gas engine that's mated to a nine-speed automatic and it makes 188 horsepower and 258 foot-pounds of torque. It doesn't sound like a lot and frankly it isn't, but all Sprinters are still rated to pull 5,000 pounds, which we did with this van. More on that to come in a bit. The optional drivetrain for a Sprinter is a turbo diesel V6 that makes the same 188 horsepower but 324 foot-pounds of torque and that gets paired to a seven-speed automatic. If you choose that turbo diesel V6, you've got two additional options you can consider, one of them being an all-wheel drive system. Yes, you can get all-wheel drive in a cargo van. This is one of very few that offer that, and Mercedes will offer it as a full-time automatic all-wheel drive system, or you can option in a high-low transfer case. The other thing you can choose with a V6 turbo diesel sprinter is dual rear wheels. That will get you a little more payload capacity, it will get you a little more towing capacity. If you set up a Sprinter with the right configuration, you can have one that is set to pull 7,500 pounds. The challenge there is that you can't get 7,500 pounds of towing capacity, according to Mercedes-Benz, in a passenger van. So if you're looking to have a van that you can drive around day to day because maybe you have a large family, or you just want something with more creature comforts than wood floors and no insulation, you're not going to get it ordering directly from Mercedes with that higher tow capacity. The other option worth mentioning as I'm standing in the back of this van without any sort of slouching is the high roof option. Yes, this Sprinter has the optional taller roof compared to many, and it gives you about six feet, three inches of clearance inside the van. Very, very cool if you're looking to stand up and move around for the sake of having a mobile workshop back here, if you outfit this thing as a camper, or even if you're just looking to move a lot of people around and have them be able to stand up and move around in the van when you're parked. The downside to having this high roof is if you're looking to go through any sort of a drive-through. I tried and you cannot do it. This van is nearly nine feet tall. Much like towing and horsepower, we'll talk about the high roof and how it makes this van drive in just a minute. In the meantime, let's move up from the party end of the van to the business end of the van, where you, the driver, will spend much of your time. And of course, looking at the business end of this van, this is where you're gonna spend most of your time as a driver, and that's where comfort matters a lot. Mercedes has focused quite a bit on driver comfort with the Sprinter, which is not something that you always get with 
a vehicle that starts life as a work van or a cargo van. Thankfully, even the most basic versions of this van have attention to detail paid where it matters. That's including positioning of the driver relative to the steering wheel, the pedals, the seating position, things like that that really matter no matter what options you choose for this van. Now my particular van is a crew, not a passenger van, but with a bunch of options added basically from the front seats forward to make it more or less as loaded as you're gonna get. So I've heated front and passenger seats that are a black leatherette material, and both of these seats are power adjustable with extendable thigh bolsters and have three memory settings for each seat. That's pretty wild for a cargo van. Now it's an interesting thing for me to call out, but the steering wheel in this van is something I really appreciate. It mimics the steering wheel that you'll find on a lot of passenger car Mercedes products. And it sounds silly given this is a work van first and foremost, but I really, really like the fact that you can get a thick, nicely designed, leather wrapped wheel with controls for your different functions throughout the dashboard, and they'll put it in a van for you. And when you talk about what the steering wheel can control, you have to reference the center screen in between the front seats. This is the largest screen that Mercedes offers in the Sprinter. You can get a smaller seven inch screen or you can get a van without an infotainment system at all, just a basic radio. But this is the 10 inch MBUX infotainment system that is all new in some of Mercedes passenger cars as well. This responds to simple commands like, hey Mercedes, I'm cold, hey Mercedes, navigate to whatever address. And it really is a nice touch because yes, it's a more utilitarian integration of the screen and the system in this van, but regardless, it's got very modern software, it's very fast, very easy to use. And if you're looking to build out a van for whatever your purpose may be behind the front two seats, but you still want something that's pretty nice from the factory, a good place to log a bunch of miles on the highway, this van really has it. The seats were comfortable, it was more or less a joy to put miles on, aside from the noise, we'll talk about that in a minute. But as far as how the driver and front passenger are treated, they are treated very, very well in a Sprinter, given what this vehicle is. Now with that, let's hop behind the wheel and take it for a quick spin. All right, so the Sprinter 2500, I can't say the word M-E-R-C-E-D-E-S because the infotainment system is too smart and will recognize that as a command to turn itself on. So I can't say the brand name, unfortunately on this video. So it's interesting driving one of these because I haven't really spent a lot of time driving cargo vans beyond, you know, the occasional U-Haul rental. The most recent I drove was a Ford Transit from U-Haul. And I've driven some Chevy Express based vans that are, are built into box trucks for, uh, for different moving companies. So it's interesting to drive one of these. It's a little more kitted out for the sake of just hauling people and things as a regular van and not upfitted to some other company's needs. Now what MB has done here is really focused on the driver above everything else, and that is really nice to see. Uh, my, my big complaints about some older vans are that the driving position is just abysmal. It's not somewhere that you'd want to spend a lot of time or miles. And in this case, I really think the driving position and the driver comfort is quite good. The seats are nice. They have adjustable lumbar support. They're 10-way adjustable. They have three different memory settings for both driver and passenger, which is really cool. I've got a nice relationship with the steering wheel and the pedals here. My feet are not cramped. There's even a room for a dead pedal. I've got some nice informative gauges to look at, and then I've got this wonderful MBUX infotainment system. So from a driving perspective, all of the materials are really well thought out and really well positioned, and I think a lot of time was spent on all of this, which is great to see. I said we would talk about power, and like I mentioned, this is the base engine for 2020. It's a two liter turbocharged gasoline four cylinder that makes 188 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. And it goes with a nine speed automatic automatic gearbox and power is sent only to the rear wheels in this configuration. If you want that all-wheel drive, you have to get the turbo diesel V6. And if you want a dually, you have to get the turbo diesel V6. And that V6 makes the same power, but a little more torque. It's 258 versus 324. So what's interesting with this van and that 188 horsepower is that it never really feels super slow. I thought it would feel slower than it does, to be honest. And you're not going to win any drag races, but even with 5,000 pounds thrown on the hitch, it's not that bad. 
And part of that is just coming from the 258 pound-feet of torque that the van generates. It relies on torque much more than horsepower to both get moving and keep moving. And also with that nine-speed automatic, it's geared short enough that it can get off the line and feel snappy around town. You just have to be willing to rev it out a little bit more if you're pulling a lot of weight or if you're looking to pass someone, say, on the highway. And of course, with all this, we should talk about towing. Between the car and the trailer, we were coming close to the 5,000 pound weight limit of the Sprinter 2500. We're probably at 46 to 4,800 pounds, uh, just as a rough guess. Now, the interesting thing with putting that much weight on the back of this van is that it didn't really feel markedly slower. Of course, the engine has to work a little harder to make its power and to get you going. And with those nine gears and the turbocharger, it moves out all right, both from a stop and on the highway. You do just have to be willing to rev it out to, to make everything happen. The issues that I experienced while towing that made it a little more unpleasant came more or less due to how this particular van is configured, as well as the fact that these vans are considered a unibody structure instead of body on frame. Now that high roof is a really nice option if you're looking to stand up in the van while you're parked. However, when you're driving on the highway and you get any sort of wind coming, you really feel it push the van side to side. Now there is some software built into the van that uses what it can to help control everything in the event of strong crosswinds. I never felt anything strong enough to kick that in. You will get a message on the cluster if that software starts doing its job, but I never felt it kick in and regardless, it's just something that you're gonna deal with as a result of having a high roof. You can order these vans with a low roof as a passenger van and that's probably what I'd recommend for most buyers unless you really, really wanna stand up inside. I think it would really contribute to general chassis stability once you get moving beyond city speeds. I also mentioned that this particular van was a crew van that didn't have a lot of insulation or much going on in the interior beyond that second row of seats and that contributes to an incredibly noisy ride. It is so loud in here at highway speeds with wind, without wind, with a trailer, without a trailer. It's just loud. You don't realize how much insulation a regular passenger car has until you drive a vehicle like this. So if you're going to use one of these vans and outfit it on your own, it would definitely be worth adding some insulation for your sanity on the highway. If you're going to just drive it around town, you don't really get enough noise going on and reverberations with this big box behind you at, at city speeds to make it a problem. And then finally, I mentioned the fact that this is a unibody van. Some of the older vans like the Chevy Express and the Nissan NV are body on frame like pickup trucks and that isolates the tow hitch from the passenger compartment of the van. The Sprinter vans use a partial frame that is welded to the structure, more or less like a unibody would be. Now the issue here with a unibody, and this is not exclusive to this van, it's just worth mentioning, is that when you're towing, the hitch does not fit into the receiver with a perfect snug fit. There's always just a little bit of room for it to move. And the problem is with a unibody vehicle like this van, you hear every little bit of movement between metal and metal when you come to a stop, when you go over a bump, anything. So when you consider the fact that a unibody van like this will get a little bit of noise from the hitch by default, plus you add in the fact that a crew van is not really insulated behind the front seats, plus you add in the bit of crosswind we had to deal with given this is a high roof and it was a little bit of a windy day when I was towing, the tow experience in this van was stable and it was exhausting. So given the fact that this van is the shorter of the two wheelbase options at 144 inches, even then, it's plenty of wheelbase for the sake of stability, but everything behind the front seats contributed to making the towing experience really, really tedious. And that's not something that I would normally say about almost any tow vehicle. I think with a bit of a different configuration, a lot of my complaints could be resolved, but this particular van is not one that I would particularly choose to tow with a second time. And with that, that is the 2020 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter 2500 Crew with the two liter turbocharged four cylinder gasoline engine. Thanks so much for coming along. I know this is a bit different video compared to what we've been putting out lately but vans like these are really great options for people who are looking to bring a motorcycle to a race event or tow their car to a race event and perhaps camp in the back or have a workshop out of the back of the van if you like what we're up to please do subscribe to us right here on youtube give us a follow on facebook or instagram and be sure to check out the full written review of this sprinter on outmotorsports.com thanks so much and we'll see you again soon